Have you been watching The Last of Us? I'm here to tell you that fungal infections really can kill. The real science behind the TV show The Last of Us. Do cordyceps exist in real life? So there is a large group of fungal species known as the Ophiocordyceps. Now some of these species have the ability to infect different insects, such as ants, grasshoppers and spiders. What that means is that when the fungus infects the insect, they get into the nervous system of the insect and then they control where that insect then walks and moves to. What the fungus is trying to do is get the insect to move to an area where the conditions are just right for fungal sporulation. When that happens, the fungus can then burst out through the insect's body, usually out of the top of the head, to release its spores into the environment. These then become airborne and the infection will spread. How accurate is the infection process in the show? So there are actually some elements or some symptoms that we see in the characters in The Last of Us, the ones who have the fungal infection, that we actually see in people who have real uh, life human uh, fungal infections. So for example, the first stage of the infection in the TV show, known as the runners, they have loss of motor control, twitching, and other symptoms that we see in patients who have meningitis. So the most common cause of fungal meningitis is cryptococcal meningitis. This is caused by a fungus called Cryptococcus neoformans. And this is a very devastating infection that kills over 100,000 people every year, particularly in patients in sub-Saharan Africa who have AIDS. In the TV show, the second stage of the infection is known as the stalkers. This is when the infected person gets a fungal growth coming out of the top of their head or out of their eye. This is very similar to what we see as a cordyceps infection of ants, when the final stage of the infection, when the fungus bursts out of the top of the head to release its spores. Now, we don't tend to see that in patients who have uh, fungal infections in the real uh, world. However, there are some examples of fungal infections of humans where you can get fungal growth in the skin, leading to a very nasty chronic infection, which can be very painful and very difficult to treat. So an example of this would be pheohyphomycosis, which is typically caused by fungus that are black in colour. And so a lot of the uh, lesions that we see in the skin in those patients are also black as a result. So the third stage of infection in the last of us is known as the clicker stage. This is when the fungus has completely overgrown the top of the infected person's head and has become very plated. The person has now lost their eyesight and they've developed a clicking noise to help with echolocation. Now this is something that we do not see with human uh, fungal infections in real life. However, there are some fungal infections that can take over your eyesight and cause you to lose your um, eyes as a result. So an example of this would be mucormycosis. This is caused by a fungus, sometimes referred to as the black fungus, invading the, uh, the blood vessels and the tissues around your sinuses in the back of the eye. And if you don't treat that very quickly, what can happen is you can lose your eye and some of the surrounding tissues to the infection. Could cordyceps ever control humans? So one of the reasons that cordyceps doesn't currently cause human infections is because, like many other fungal species, cordyceps is unable to grow at our internal body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. However, with global warming, fungi must be able to adapt to these warming temperatures, and so it's becoming likely that we might start to see mutations in fungi to help it adapt to this global uh, warming climate. But in order to cause uh, human infections, the cordyceps fungi would not only be able to have to grow at 37 degrees Celsius, it would also have to defend itself against our immune system. And that would mean many more mutations and adaptations. It would take a very long time for the fungus to develop. And so, at least for the time being, cordyceps infections of humans is very unlikely. However, there is still cause to be concerned because there is some evidence that some fungal species are adapting to global warming. An example of this would be Candida auris. This is a yeast that can grow right up to 42 degrees Celsius and is now causing life-threatening infections in vulnerable patients all around the world. It has spread very, very quickly since 2009. It is now in three different continents. And one of the reasons that we're very concerned about Candida auris is because it is inherently resistant to many of our antifungal drugs that we have available. And this makes that infection very difficult to treat. 